Hi, how are you doing everybody? Welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today we are going to be talking about the driver and in particular we're going to be talking about how to keep your head back and just bomb the driver. So just start to find more distance and look more like a bit of a professional type golfer. Now what we're going to be talking about in this video today, specifically the ability to be able to get that arm extension through the ball and not look, which is kind of quite commonplace. We tend to have two different types of amateur golfers. We tend to have the ones that know they're supposed to keep their head back, but there's no real movement. So they end up sort of chicken winging and hitting this way. So they're hitting up on the ball, but not really capitalizing on any distance. And then we have the type of golfer that, should we say, rotates, doesn't really know how to keep the head back. So they end up sort of coming over the top and slicing across the golf ball. So understanding today this video of keeping the head back, extending that hitting area through, is going to be a massive advantage to everyone who watches this video. Now, first things first, let's talk about a couple of the basics in terms of what happens. So the driver is longer, okay? So that's the first thing that we have to take into consideration. And with the sort of sheer nature of its design, it's less lofted, okay? And it's a much bigger, deeper head. So obviously the first thing that we have to do is put the ball on a tee right that's the first thing that we're doing and we would naturally because of the length of the club we would stand further away from the golf ball as well so those are two things which you're gonna do right you're gonna do unless you've completely never even seen golf before those are things that you're gonna naturally be doing what we also need to do is we need to change the nature of the hit so with every other shot that we hit in golf, we are hitting the golf ball from off the floor and we are trying to, shall we say, strike down on the ball to get it to rise up in the air. And with the driver, now that we've located the ball on the tee, we now need to try and find a way to sweep the ball off the tee. And this is a really important thing to do because this video is about bombing drivers, so hitting it further and better. But that doesn't mean that we're trying to hit it harder. In fact, actually, you could probably reduce your club head speed a couple of miles per hour and become more efficient in the hit and actually start to increase your distance. And this explains why occasionally you might hit a really good drive that goes 10, 15 yards further than your sort of average or normal drives. Now, the important thing that we need to be talking about first and foremost is width. OK, so that's width in terms of if we're going to be trying to strike up on the golf ball, and we're not trying to be striking down on the ball, we need to find ways to make our swing a little bit wider. The first thing is to move the golf ball further forward. So if we place the golf ball so it's more in line with our lead ankle, that's a really basic thing that we can do, which changes what's known as the low point of the golf swing to striking down in the center of our stance to now ascending so it's striking the ball off the tee. The second thing is just a little tilt. Now a tilt is just a sort of drop of the shoulders, a concentration more on the back of the ball, and yet again, what this does is this is helping us hit more up on the golf ball. Okay, so we've got the ball further forward, we've got our tilt of the shoulders. What we now need to do as a big priority is we want to maintain our tilt in the backswing position. And the easiest way to do this is just to make sure that you turn your shoulders to 90 degrees in the backswing. And for those of you that video your swing or like to do some sort of swings in a reflection, you want to make sure that if you were to draw a line, a vertical line through the lead hip that you want to make sure that your spine is slightly tilted away. So we want to refrain from the spine being too vertical in the backswing position. And again, the reason for this, if we get too vertical with this spine, this would encourage us to strike down. What we need to do is we need to maintain our tilts because again, this will help us strike much more up on the ball. And that's a basic thing that many amateur golfers actually get wrong. So double check that really strong visual. Now once we've got our backswing, then the question is, well, how do we start the downswing? Because already by the title of this video, we know we need to keep our head back. But we also know that pros move, should we say left? So they move towards their lead side. So how do you do that? Keep your head back, but also without potentially looking stuck. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to achieve something where we keep our head back shift left, but there's no rotation. So the arms get stuck. And like we said earlier, we don't want to be moving this way, just swinging over the top. So in this part of the video now, we are going to be talking about a key move, which you have to nail and get correct to be able to bomb your driver so much better than you ever have done before. Okay, 
So we've got our backswing. We've understood the need for tilting and the need for width in the golf swing. What we now need to do is we need to be able to sequence the downswing correctly. Like we alluded to earlier, we don't want to be the type of golfer who hangs back, has a lack of rotation, so the arms tend to bend coming in towards that through swing. And equally, we don't want to be the type of golfer that rotates, but gets the sequencing wrong and basically ends up swinging over the top. So how do we make sure that we get the best of both of these motions? Well, we need to rotate and we need to learn how to separate. But first things first, let's just understand the rotational aspect first. Now, I've got a chair behind me and we're going to use the reference like we did earlier of that, lead, uh, of that vertical line going pretty much through the center of your lead foot. For me though, the edge of the chair here is going to resemble that line. So I'm gonna get myself set up, and you could do this in front of the mirror at home, so that basically the, the edge of the chair is in line with the center of my lead foot. And I would basically get myself set up, I would swing up towards the top of my backswing position, and the feeling is that I wanna get the center of my left glute, if you like, or basically the center line of my left butt cheek, I wanna move it back so it falls onto that line. So I don't wanna go past that point and I definitely don't want to come short of that point. Both of those will offer either too much lateral, not enough rotation, too much this way, too much spinning and over the top. So that's the first thing. Understanding the boundaries to where you're supposed to move to is really important. And this is something you can do at home so that you can get the feeling of, oh yeah, okay, pull my lead hip back onto the edge of that chair, whatever it is that you use as a reference. And then from there, you can start to get the feeling of how to pull the lead hip back out the way. So that's the correct sort of first part of our sequencing motion. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple of canes. So if I place my cane, first one through my hoops, um, through my belt loops, and the second one is going to go across my shoulders. Now I'm done with the chair for now. So we understand how that should potentially look from the face on perspective to, shall we say, get started. But what we also need to do is once you can get into the habit of doing that motion, so if I sort of just demonstrate it, this is what I was doing just a moment ago. But what you can also see is the way that I am in that previous demonstration, moving my upper and my lower body at the same rate of rotation. Now, the problem is if I now hold my driver and swing up to the top and then demonstrate this move from the... Um, doing exactly the same. So you can start to see the way the club would end up potentially swinging over the top, right? So if you like, I'd end up over here instead of dropping the club down. But the answer isn't just to move lots of linear motion because we know we'll have that lack of rotation and to get stuck. And this is where you need to understand separation. Now, separation or disassociation is the ability to move the lower body independently away from the upper body. And when you start doing this, you need to understand that you're not going to have a vast amount, right? It's only going to be quite subtle. You're not going to have loads and loads of this sort of separation or motion, but we're going to have some. And that's what you basically then need to start practicing. So if I sort of, again, swing back and I turn back, but this time, as I pull my lead hip back, instead of doing it with my upper as well, I just pull my lead hip back. And can you see the way that my lower body is working away from my upper body? Now the benefit from this, and it's more clear from the side on perspective, is that now as I initiate my downswing, instead of doing this and swinging over the top, same rate of rotation, as I start to do it this way, what will happen is this will start to create this sort of separation. You can start to see now the way the edge of the cane here. See the way that instead of moving this way, see the way that now it starts to move much closer towards the gap between both of these canes actually narrows. Okay, so this kind of motion here is helping create that sort of side crunch, separation side crunch, club can drop down. You go this way, this gap's too big, over the top. So I am, like I've been saying to you guys, I'm always looking for the same thing with people I teach. I'm not interested in that person going out, hitting loads of balls, sending me videos of them down the, down the range, all that sort of stuff, just not of an interest. What I'm interested in is to see conscious competence. So I'm always interested in seeing them demonstrate the correct motion. 
And that's why I think that doing this sort of drill and getting this sort of type of feeling is so invaluable. So not only do you understand that this is the correct way to move in the start of the downswing, yes, we're talking about it with the driver, it's the same for everything, but you can actually start to get a feeling between the difference between right and wrong and start to understand the importance of separation and the role that that plays in the golf swing. I'm not necessarily suggesting there's not other things that you need to be able to do. Like I said, what we've started to talk about in this video is we are trying to, how do you keep your head back and hit, shall we say, bomb drivers? Well, we know that you need good angles. We need to strike up on the golf ball to be able to bomb the driver. But what we also need to be able to do to bomb the driver is we need that feeling of extension. It's the same feeling as throwing a ball. You wouldn't kind of throw it this way. You have to move this way. And you're going to fall into one of those two categories. You're either going to be the golfer that can use the driver, but you notice that you sort of hang back and you feel quite stuck, or you're likely to be the type of golfer that can rotate through the ball, but doesn't get the sequencing. And hopefully what this video does is it teaches you that, okay, well, if I can get my tilts, get my angles, pull my lead hip back correctly, this maintains my tilts and stops me getting, should we say, too vertical. And then from here, if I can separate, I'm also inducing a rotational motion. And then obviously, if you can get the club into this sort of slot here, then you can roll it on the way through. If you're somebody whose release pattern looks poor, and I mean like really poor, like either flippy, you're not gonna be able to influence the release pattern based upon your awareness of the release. It's healthy to know what the hands and arms should do, as we've talked about in recent videos, but they are still a byproduct of how you're gonna move the body. So your body and your arms are two separate entities. And yes, it's worth noting what both of those do, but this video is probably one of the most important ones, especially for you with the driver, but it's the same with the iron as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Always appreciate a thumbs up, like, remember it's free to subscribe. Work on it, work on the drill, and then eventually we're gonna keep talking about how do you take these drill feelings back out onto the golf course and down the driving range. I'll see you guys again really soon.